In his novel, The Giants in the Earth, Ole Rolsvog talks about the hardships the Norwegian immigrants had as they traveled across the Dakota Territory. Interesting, uh, the characters, the male character, the husband, saw it as an adventure, as a new life. The female character, the wife, she had a harder time. She had a harder time going across the prairie. The winds got to her. Um, they almost made her insane. And the loneliness of the prairie was just too much for her. So hey, this is the Iowa Prairie Girl, and I'm here to talk about compass plant today. The compass plant was a plant that the pioneers used to direct themselves across the prairie. It is a huge, tall plant. It is a giant in the prairie. It gets to be 12 feet tall. And not only is it uh, huge in height, but it has leaves that get to be two, one to two feet long and about half that wide. And it, the reason it's called compass plant is because the pioneers relied on it. They had the belief that the leaves were directed in a north and south direction. So they used those as a guide across the prairie. It's also called polar plant because of that, re of that reason. So as you can see, I am in a small prairie in Saragota County, and it's a restored prairie. Behind me, I have a fence line. I like to think that uh, that uh, female immigrant going across the prairie would have just found a fence line an absolute relief as she was out in the vastness of the prairie. The compass plant is referred to a lot by authors. And here it's referred to uh, in a book by Longfellow. Look at this delicate plant that lifts its head from the meadow. See how its leaves are turned to the north as a true as a magnet. This is the compass flower that the finger of God has planted. Here in the houseless wild, here in the houseless wild, that's a really good phrase, houseless wild, to direct the traveler's journey. Henry Longfellow, 1847. So hey, this is the Iowa Prairie Girl, and we're going to talk about compass plant today. So I hope you keep watching. Okay, so I know I'm short, but just look at these guys. They're just towering over me. So like I said, they get to be 8 to 12 feet tall. Um, one thing also, I talked about how they're called compass plants because of the leaves guiding the pioneers, but they were also used as trail markers, both for the Native Americans and for um, uh, pioneers as they moved across the prairie. The scouts would go out, the scouts for the um, wagon trains would go out, and they would tie a ribbon to the top of these compass plants uh, so that they could mark the trail. And as you can see, the compass plant is the tallest plant on the prairie, so this this far exceeds that of um, blue stem or turkey grass that's also very tall, or Indian grass as well. So you can see why it would be used as a marker along the trail. So let's take a moment and talk about this big tall stem. As you can see, it's very sturdy, it's erect. Um, it doesn't branch off, this one really doesn't branch off too much at all. Uh, it branches, most of them branch off a little bit more towards the top like a tree. Um, and then they have flowers on those branches. It's light green and it's very, uh, very rough. It has fine white hairs on it, um, but it's very rough feeling. Now another name for compass plant is gumweed. And as the, when the plant is in its blooming stage, up on the top here, towards the top, if you were to cut it, it has a gummy substance that you could get from that and it's resin and, um, the Native Americans and the early pioneers would use that resin as gum. Um, it not only could you chew it, but it also was used to freshen your breath. Let's talk a little bit more about where you're going to find the compass plant. You're going to find compass plant um, in open dry prairies or along ditches, um, also along railroad tracks. It likes the full sun, and it kind of grows better in areas that have been disturbed a little bit. Now, in Saragota County, in northern Iowa, um, I don't. I, I would challenge you to drive a county road or a country road in Saragota County and not find a compass plant um, in one of the ditches in Saragota County. It is very prolific here um, in North Iowa. These 
these are the leaves of a compass plant. Now we're talking about a yellow sunflower-like plant that can be really confusing to identify when you're looking at yellow flowers at the late end of the summer. But when you have a compass plant, the identification is simple because you're just looking at these leaves. Once you see these leaves, you'll know that it's a compass plant. So as you can see, they're huge. They do get to be almost two feet um, long. Um, they are very, very lobed, um, very toothed, and they look like a giant pin oak leaf. They're also covered with very fine hairs, and they're very rough and stiff feeling. It, it, they feel like sandpaper. Um, as we mentioned, they do like to go north in a north and south direction, and one of the reasons that they do that is they gain the benefit of um, the morning sun and the um, evening sun, but they don't. But when they're facing the north-south direction, they don't get beat up by the noon sun. And if on a very hot day uh, and the sun is beating down, if you reach down and touch a compass plant leaf, they are cool to the touch. And actually, these are cool to the touch, and I'm sweating. It's really warm out here. It's July, third week in July. So um, they are cool to the touch. That's really cool. Um, the other thing about compass plant is that they have a clasping leaf. Um, and clasping leaves are some of my, one of my favorite types of leaf. But um, the larger plants, or the basal leaves, are much larger. The leaves get smaller as they ascend up the stem. Um, the clasping leaf, it is clasping here on the stem, um, but it does have what I would call a, a stem or a petiole. As they go further up the stalk, the clasping becomes more evident and they don't have that, um, that stem-like or stalk-like uh, um, structure. So, compass, lamp, compass plant leaf, very distinguished. Let's take a look at the flower now. Compass plants bloom in July and August and they bloom for about a month and a half. Now one thing that I find difficult about compass plant is that you have to um, a lot of times the flower is up over your head, so you got to find a flower or a plant that it has either fallen down or maybe one that's not as mature, um, so it's the same height as you. Otherwise, you're trying to take pictures of flowers that are way up over your head. So these are yellow sunflower-like plants. Um, they could go into the category of DYCs. DYCs are damn yellow composites. Those are those yellow flowers that bloom in the late summer that are so hard to distinguish. But compass plant, like I said, is easy to distinguish because it has that huge, almost elephant-like um, leaf that you can identify it by. But if we take a look at uh, the compass plant um, flower, it is a yellow sunflower looking like um, flower. It, um, the plant itself might have anywhere between 6 to 30 flowers on it. Uh, usually depends on how many branches it's got up towards the top. The flower has um, about, between 15 to 30 ray petals, and those are the fertile part of the plant. That is where the seed will come from. Unlike other sunflowers, the disc plant, disc part of the plant is sterile, and it, that, you will not see seeds growing in there like you would see a sunflower plant. Now, this was really quite confusing to me, um, and I just now realized what I was trying to read, is that this disc, so you have two parts, you have two flowers growing here. You have the ray flower, which is um, part of, a, which is a flower in and of itself, and then you have the disc flower, which is another flower. And the disc um, has tiny little flor, uh, flower petals in here with brown stamen, with yellow tips. So I wasn't quite sure when I was looking at this what I was seeing because I see all these uh, yellow um, strings coming out of the f of the disc. So those are the tips of the stamen. And if you look really, really close, there are tiny little flowers. There's got to be 100 to 200 of them in the disc all together compacted in there flowering. So that is the flower of the compass plant. In all truthfulness, I don't find it to be the most attractive flower there is out in the prairie, but it, it's just such a cool plant that you have to ignore the fact that the flower itself isn't all that wonderful. The other thing that I really like about the compass plant is the bracket. It's just this cool gr light green ball. Um, so remember the bracket is the outside of the, the flower here that holds the petals together and protects it before it, before it um, 
before it blooms. And you can see that she's got this green ball. It's, you can find them anywhere between the size of um, a ping pong to a tennis ball. So that's another uh, distinguishing part of the compass plant. Another amazing thing about the compass plant is its root system. So for a plant to get this tall, just think of how deep um, that root has to be. The roots on the compass plant go 15 to 16 feet uh, down deep into the ground. Uh, the, at the very base of the plant, where the, um, the root itself has a diameter of 1 to 2 inches, but then it tapers down and becomes much skinnier as it goes further down into the ground. Now last week, I tried to dig a 12 inch, 12 inches, 12 inch compass plant out of my uh, neighbor's prairie to transplant to my own prairie. I couldn't do it. I'm, I'm sure the thing won't grow. The taproot was two inches diameter. It was like a huge hard carrot. Um, so that's just another amazing part about the compass plant and uh, why it gets to, it's drought resistant and why it gets to be so, why it gets to be the giant of the prairie. Okay, so compass plants live to be, could live to be 100 years old. Um, cattle find them very palatable. If you have cattle in your meadow or your prairie, um, they're going to eat up all your compass plant and um, they'll, they'll disappear. Um, wildlife enjoy compass plants. Of course, the seeds are eaten by small mammals and birds. And also, I like this thought. So out in the prairie, there's no trees, there's no, nothing to perch on. And so birds will perch on the top of prairie uh, of the compass plant, and uh, kingbirds spe specifically will use the compass plant as a perch to sit on and then swoop down uh, to get insects out of the prairie grasses. One superstition about uh, compass plants, the Native Americans wouldn't camp around them. They called them lightning plants. I suppose as one of the tallest structures out on the prairie, maybe it was uh, prone to um, being the place where net lightning would strike. All right, I'd like to leave you with a quote from Aldo Leopold from his book, A Sand of County, um, Sand County Almanac. It is the solemn remnant of this plant along this highway, or perhaps the sole remnant in the western half of our country. What a thousand acres of compass plant looked like when they tickled the bellies of the buffalo is a question never again to be answered, and perhaps not even asked. And this is from the book, Who Named the Daisy, Who Named the Rose? A very good book on the names of prairie plants. I hope you like my video. Please uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please feel free to share my videos. This is the Iowa Prairie Girl coming to you from a remnant prairie here in Saragota County. And I hope that uh, you found my video on compass plant interesting. And again, as always, I hope that you get out um, into the into the wild, into the nature, into, into the prairie, my favorite place, and I hope that you see something wonderful. Thank you for watching.